killer is dead. Killer is Dead from Suda51 could be described in many ways. Insane, bonkers, violent, twisted, smooth, strange, odd, weird, and I imagine there's many more words along those lines that could be used to sum up this game. To put it simply, this is one of the most craziest games I have played in years. The characters are larger than life, the combat is fun and fluid, the story is absolutely crazy. Level design is wonderfully imagined, and the game throughout is pretty enjoyable. To me. In Killer is Dead, you play as the ultra smooth protagonist Mondo Zappa, who can actually give Dante or James Bond the run for their money. As you progress through the story, you learn more about Mondo's character and his past, as well as spending time getting to know the ladies. Mondo doesn't work alone though, he's also assisted by a few other characters as well. Hey, give me a sec. I'm in the middle of something. Brian is a half-man, half-machine who's your boss. Vivian is a master motorcyclist and master of the 16-gun technique, which needs to be seen to be believed. And Mika is the most annoying member of the team. She acts as the medic, who revives you when you're down, as long as you have a Mika ticket. The entire cast is voiced brilliantly, but there's also an option to switch to Japanese voices for those who prefer it over English. Really? Yes, now let's get ready. Pronto. I'll do my best. The, job. the characters throughout are fairly interesting, but the bosses steal the show. Some of them are actually easier to take down than others, and the difficulty does spike depending on what boss you're facing, but they are awesome! One level you'll be fighting a samurai who's embodied with the spirit of a tiger, and another has you fight a man who believes he's gaining incredible power by uh, clipping his uh, toenails. What are you doing? Here. You're really going to ask me that? Can't you tell just by looking? I'm acquiring unparalleled power. There are a few boss battles that might catch you out on the harder levels though. At one point I had to button mash the X button during a duel. I eventually had to put a sock on my finger just so I could go faster. It was like the old school track and field. However, there was only a few moments like this in the game, which myself and my controller are grateful for. The gameplay is certainly enjoyable. The combat is simple, it's easy to pull off combos, and well-timed dodges enable you to counter. There's also a few special finishing moves that you can pull off too, and they look amazing. Mondo also has an arm that can transform into various weapons, which can be used to defeat enemies or open up new areas in certain levels. There's also a huge variety of enemies that come in all shapes and sizes and offer individual challenge. There are some that are just mere fodder for your blade, whilst others are heavily armoured and can make life extremely difficult for you. The maps themselves are nicely done, however, I do feel it peaks a little bit too soon with the Alice and Wonderland theme map. It looks great. But later on, you do end up fighting in less exciting locals. Some of them are pretty good, however, and they do have their own themes, but for me, the Wonderland level stood out as my favourite. Sadly, Killer is Dead has some issues. In combat, you can't lock onto specific enemies, which can make things difficult if you want to target a certain individual. The camera sometimes loses you during fights, and it can get frustrating when you're unable to see what you're doing. And for those that like to pull off aerial attacks, they might be disappointed as there's no jump button, so the combat is ground based which can get a bit repetitive, and there's not many ways to mix it up. The combat is basic, with only a handful of new attacks that Mondo can learn. However, despite this, for what it is, the combat works fine, and it is easy to pick up and play for beginners, and you'll be soon dodging and countering attacks in no time. However, personally, I would have preferred more variety. Aside the main campaign, there's plenty of other things to do, including various challenge maps and the somewhat controversial Gigolo missions. Yeah, that's right, Gigolo missions. Where you hook up with a lady, stare at her lady bits to pluck up courage, have an attempt to win her over with a present. And if you're lucky, you'll end up with a night of fiery passion. Hmm. Now, I have to admit, it's very odd to play, let alone it's an actual thing. I don't know how that it is, it's just 
bizarre. I feel this could it could certainly alienate or put off some gamers altogether because it's just completely absurd. Which and to be honest, the entire game is absurd, but this takes it to a whole new level. It's just very odd and it's pervy. I just don't understand why it's actually in the game and. It gets worse, especially when you actually get x-ray glasses so you can actually see for their clothes. I mean, come on. The Gigolo missions are an extremely sleazy part of the game, and it's pretty disappointing, as Killer is Dead is more likely remembered for these rather than its campaign. Some people might get a kick out of it, but personally, it's just very shallow, superficial, and shouldn't really be a feature in the game. Sadly, you will have to play through some of these Gigolo missions so you can actually unlock new arm upgrades which are needed for certain challenges or finding secret areas in the main campaign. I have to say, they are pretty cringeworthy. Gigolo missions aside, the campaign is amazing with some fantastic standout moments. It should take up to 7 to 8 hours to beat on easy to medium, but there's also leaderboards for you to compare speed runs and gradings for each mission. You will spend hours trying to best your own scores and completing objectives such as beating a level without being hit or crouching 20 times. There's plenty of bonus challenge missions to take on too and they will reward you with new gifts to buy at the store for your ladies. So there's plenty for you to keep you busy and it will take you a while to 100% the game as some of the challenges are, well, they're pretty damn tough to beat. Now for the major flaw, and that's the loading screens. They pop up left, right and centre and it really disrupts the gameplay. The transitions between cutscenes and gameplay can get infuriating when they are just interrupted by a short screen with sombre music. And considering the game's nature, there could have been more creative ways to do this. It's a big shame because it stops you from being immersed in the game. Overall, Killer is Dead is something different. It's absurd, and it knows it. It's aware of what it is. The crazy story will have you holding your head saying, what the fuck is going on? And with the wonderful art direction and addictive gameplay, it may be argued that this game is the game that Devil May Cry should have been, the exception of the Gigolo missions. It's insane, it's absurd, and it's absolutely mental, and in some cases, it's immoral. However, without a doubt, this game is certainly worth playing, even if it's just a rental. For hardcore pseudo fans, it's a must buy. For newcomers, it is certainly worth checking out. If you're looking for something to blow your mind, look no further than Killer is Dead. For more news or reviews, or you're looking for more information on Killer is Dead, then head over to Central Gamer.